So this is the end of um, my build for Yurt 2.0. I do need to clean up this mess. I'll leave it here for now though, and I'll come back and deal with it later. Uh, hear noise over there. I am getting ready to leave and thought I would film my way out because always when I have the camera off, weird stuff happens. So we've got our drainage pipe here, our drainage ditch, not pipe, but ditch. You can hear the others off in the distance. I am going to head out now. What's left of your 1.0. It has become a little kitchen area, outdoor kitchen with dining. I do need to clean up this area here, which I will deal with another time. So much for the little fenced in area we're making. These are some of the plants my wife tried to grow. Um, squash, I think. You can see them here. Let me try to move this stuff out of the way here. She said, um, my wife was saying that unless you water them, those flowers, they're not going to bear any fruit. You have to like keep watering them every day. Obviously, I'm not going to be out here to water them. So, they probably won't bear any fruits. But they are growing. Here's our initial trailblaze with the cheapo white Walmart paint. Surprisingly, it's still here. I still remember my first time coming back here and how scary it was. You know, and I can't believe I actually got lost and was stuck out here for 45 minutes trying to figure out how to get out. I was going round and round and round in circles. And now that I know the way out, it's crazy. It's like really not that far. Especially when you look at it on the, um, looks like a, a path deviation here. Animals are going through a different path. Um, when you look at it on the overhead view of Google Maps, you see how small the area really is. But um, when you are out here walking and all you see everywhere you look is like this. Just tall grass everywhere. And trees that all look the same. They're not even trees. They're like bushes or sh weed that has grown to the point where they're like trees or uh, shrubs. Um, a warning for you if you're at this front section. I have spotted several snakes crossing at this area. So this is a popular snake crossing spot. I think they're, un I mean, I think they're safe snakes, those little black ones and some ring snakes. They're like black snakes with um, red or orange rings around their head. Um, I think they're not poisonous. Anyhow, we made it back out. The bridge is up. It'd be interesting because this little plant here that wasn't here is huge now. So next time I come, there might actually be a tree here, <laughs> which will be really very, very interesting. Remember that bag that we thought might have a body? I still haven't looked. The hut in Camp Freedom 2 has served its purpose. And um, my time here is done again. A little sad. We are leaving it with lots of water. I didn't finish everything. I did have concrete. I was planning on using concrete to set everything down. And now I'm thinking, nah, I'm not going to bother to do that. Then I thought of using it as flooring on the yurt. But then I said, nah, I don't have time to do that. And it would probably take more than one bag. Lots and lots of water. That water is not drinkable. That water is meant for... Um, putting out the fire here and if you want to I guess you could bathe in it but it's kind of gross I would filter it if I was going to use it for showering or something I did leave a rice cooker here if you want it you can have it uh, basically some of you were wondering why I leave things here at the camp and at the yurt and keep asking if I'm afraid you know why I'm not afraid that someone will come and take it uh, the answer is simple <laughs> I left it here for people. So if somebody wants it, if they need it badly, just take it. You know, it was left here for people to use and if you really need it, take it with you. That's why it was left. I have everything that I need in here, inside Little Blue too, which is my home. And um, has carried me through all this time. 
So feel free to take what you need. Feel free to continue building and adding on. I don't own any of this. This is just done um, to keep my sanity, even though it seems highly insane to be doing all this. I had to keep my, myself busy and also create video content for YouTube to keep the channel going when I wasn't actually in the van living because I couldn't even afford that. Um, so the channel has stayed alive because of all these side projects. And I know a lot of the van dwellers got upset because they said, you're not traveling. Well, I didn't have any money. And also I have issues that are keeping me here, just like right now. Um, but by um, doing the hut episodes and the compound and the yurt, the channel has continued to stay alive and has grown to an extent. Um, we've had a lot of different types of viewers come by and, you know, a lot of my core audience are van dwellers because, you know, this is what the group is, living in a van. Um, I do recommend if you are a van dweller or interested in this lifestyle that you join the Living in a Van Facebook group. Um, there's a Living in a Van Facebook page which is run by me. But you'll want to join the group. There's like right now about 5,500 of us in the group. Uh, these are people ranging from all experience levels, from those who have lived in their van for more than 15, 20 years, to those who are dreaming about it. Um, some people are doing it by choice, and others are being forced into it. So use the, the groups as... Um, one, a social area where you can meet others with similar interests. Two, there's a lot, a wealth of knowledge in that group. A lot of the um, viewers of this channel are from that group. So, you know, the, the comments that they've made for me, you may want to read because a lot of it is applicable to a situation you may find yourself in, such as I am right now, um, looking for work. Um, trying to figure out how to survive here on the road when you got no income virtually. Now, thankfully for me, the viewers on this particular channel are extremely kind, and some have uh, thrown me, literally, thrown me lifelines when I was like, oh man, I was down to my last penny or whatever. And it's carried me through to the point right now where I have a job lined up, and um, I should be okay at least for the next couple months. And hopefully during that time, I can try to find more stable work, as in um, full-time regular work, and try to get my life back again. I thank you all for joining me, and I think this may be the end of the um, yurt series, although I may come back every so often to check it out. I did enjoy it, and I appreciate you guys for staying with me. Until next time, everybody, have a great day.